Well, Jim Parsons, are you making more and more room in your house for all these awards you're getting? I mean, you've just been lining them up left and right lately. Um, uh, you know, it doesn't feel quite as many as that sounds like. Uh, so, no, not really. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm, it's, I'm really grateful for the ones that have come my way, and it's really, really nice. And um, I don't know. You just never know. It's such a crapshoot, a lot of that, you know? Mm. Definitely. Well, look, uh, what I'd like to know is um, last year you're sitting in the audience and a lot of people have already said beforehand, oh, Jim Parsons is one of the front runners to win the award, which gives you more pressure. And then the, the envelope is open and Jim Parsons is announced. What goes through your mind when you're running up to the stage? Um, well, it was very funny because right before they announced it, uh, I, I really felt like I had a moment of clarity where I thought this isn't, it won't be me. I don't know why. Um, maybe it's some sort of pessimist inside, but I really thought that pretty clearly. So when they did say my name, uh, I, it, it's the most unreal feeling I think that I've ever acutely had or, or, or actually had in my life. You know, I, I do remember very much walking up there and and thinking to myself quite clearly that if this wasn't really happening, if I was imagining this, it wouldn't shock me. It did. It just it had a feeling of, of uh, levity or otherness about it. It didn't. It was. It was. It's very odd. And, and you know, it's a little. It's also intimidating. There's a lot of people in that room, and not just famous people, but there's just a lot of people in general, and, and you feel that all behind you as you're walking up there, and it kind of helps to lend it to that whole strangeness of the whole moment. Um, and it really wasn't until weeks later that it felt sort of like it had really happened. Uh, and honestly, sometimes when I remember, like I am right now, recounting what it was like to walk up there, it's still there's a level of it that doesn't feel that it was actually a real event. Uh, and I don't know why that is, other than it's a very strange thing that you don't do a lot in your life, you know, unless you're Meryl Streep or something. Um, but even then, it's still a rare occurrence in life, you know. Well, how was the Golden Globe uh, night and the Golden Globe win different than the Emmy win? Well, first off, I knew that Haley was one of the co-presenters for it, and... I thought that was really odd, and, and I thought, and still think, they took a heck of a chance. I mean, they put her up there. She was either going to give me a trophy or she was going to have to um, feel badly that she didn't, I guess, although I wouldn't have wanted her to, but I don't know. Um, but the other funny thing was, beyond just that Kaylee was up there, was our table was very close towards the backstage area, and so... When they when she announced that it was me, I, I didn't even go up stage. I went I went backstage as if I was a presenter. I it was her and Matt Bomer, and I walked behind them to the podium. Um, so it was it was different in almost every way it could have been from the Emmy experience. You know, whereas the room is behind you, and like I say, in that when you're walking up at the Emmys, this time, like I say, I went on as a presenter almost to to get the award. So you just you come at them from the it was. It was different. <laughs> okay, so you've got a chance now to repeat in the comedy lead actor category. What is it going to take to get you up on the podium for any number two? We've got a few episodes in mind. Do you have a highlight episode from the last season? Um, oh, I don't yet. You know, for some reason, and I'm not sure if it'll be the one that I guess now we don't submit unless we get nominated. So if I have to submit, yeah. I really don't know. The only one that's occurred to me and that's crossed my mind, mind right now is there was one where Eliza Dushku was on, and um, I interfered with Howard getting clearance for some NASA thing, government clearance he needed, and I wouldn't. I, I told her some things that stopped him from getting clearance, and I feel really bad about that. Or Sheldon does, and um, and I just enjoyed I enjoyed doing that episode very much. I enjoyed uh, having to deal with Sheldon deal with some sort of crisis of, of you know, he felt, um, he felt guilt. He felt bad and that he needed to try and correct it. And he couldn't, most importantly, where normally he can. 
Um, and so that was kind of fun in general. And then in specific, there was one scene that I had where I confess my sins essentially to to Penny in the in, a, in the bar where she's working. And I had this shot that I had to keep taking back and spitting back into the thing. And and that was really fun too. I really liked that scene. I thought they did a wonderful job of writing it. I loved getting to do it with Kaylee. Um, but you know, it's very funny now that we've done four seasons of shows. There's, I honestly, there's beginning to be a blur. I can't <laughs> honestly remember everything that was this year and what was something from another season. So I know that happened this year. So that may be part of the reason I'm answering with that one right now. We talked to you, your, your ideas at all yesterday. <laughs> And uh -huh. he said the exact same thing when we were asking him about an episode. He said, and he added in even on top of that, that certain scenes from episodes, you can't remember if, if they went together. This one might have been an episode A, and this one might have been Absolutely. an episode B. And, and so it's, it gets harder as you do them, more of them. Yeah, I mean, it's a definition of a high-class problem to have. You know, <laughs> thank goodness we've done enough to, to do that. But, um, yeah. but it is true. It's a fact. We think you're a great example of how the Emmy system works because the panel obviously, what we, we both thought if the panel really paid attention last year, your pants alternative episode was gonna, <laughs> was gonna get you the trophy. So we're hoping, uh, that you'll choose a good one again. We've got a couple of suggestions for you if you want to comment Please on tell them. Me. Um, one is, uh, the cruciferous vegetable amplification. Your, your titles are so, that's the one where you're the robot. Um, yeah. And I know you're off screen some, but really you're not because the face of the robot is still is still <laughs> I you. Agree. And it just, I don't think I laughed more at you any of this whole season than that one. That was, I, I'll be honest, that was one of, it's another, you're right, it's one of my favorites. I thought that was the most ingenious idea on their part. And I really, you know, like you say, I wasn't in the room uh, with a lot of the other actors physically, but that was one of the most fun challenges I've had doing this show so far was because we did it obviously, you know, I was off stage, um, but we were all going at the same time. And it was very fun to figure out how to make, you know, between me and the director, really, how to make certain things work and look here for this or whatever. And um, it was just a whole new way of, uh, of figuring things out. Um, but again, I thought the idea itself was simply priceless. And the way they rigged up that robot to come out with the shirt hanging off of it, you know, <laughs> it's just, it's brilliant. That's brilliant. Mm. Well, look, Jim, speaking of awards as well, we think that um, it's possible now that Big Bang will actually now break through in the comedy series category. I'm speaking to Johnny and Canal earlier this week. Uh, they both agreed that it would be wonderful, and they're really hoping that it will happen. Um, what do you think it's going to take to break through into that very difficult category and finally be nominated? Oh, I don't know. I really don't. I mean, you know, I don't feel like the show suffers from people not knowing about it, you know, uh, whereas a few years ago, maybe you could say that or whatever. So it's not it's not a lack of, of name recognition. Um, uh, there's probably a lot of people who still haven't seen it. Um, you know, but even saying that, I know that a, a, a nice push was made last year by, uh, I hope this isn't crass to say, but I know we had a real heavy duty packaging that came out and everything and, and, and that didn't, you know, end up leading to a nomination or whatever and I don't know, I don't know. I, um, I guess I should leave it at that because I literally don't know or have any <laughs> suggestions. Well, sometimes these um, it's so cool and so hip now, these these single camera shows, that sometimes yeah. the traditional three, three camera, four camera studio audience kind of a show isn't deemed, uh, um, I guess, as, as cool as the other ones are. So that may be part of the problem. That, I, definitely, I think there's some truth to that. I really do. Um, I, it does feel, though, and maybe this is why it could be this year, it does feel in the past couple of years especially there's been, I don't know if it's been a resurgence of, of multi-camera, but um, whereas, you know, when we first started, the death knell was being rung, and, and obviously that's not true. Um, but I think that's more widely accepted now that, that, you know, both forms are going to probably coexist quite happily together, the single camera and the multi-camera. Yeah. Um, and uh, and so for that reason alone, maybe kind of going to what you just said, maybe it will, maybe that kind of acceptance that, no, it's it's still here with us <laughs> is enough to, to push it over the edge. I don't know. It's, it's really hard. You know, that's why I said when we first started, it all feels like such a, a, a crapshoot. Um, 
I, I, I don't know. It's, it's, when I finally was able to vote as an Emmy member, or nominate, I should say, is when I realized how surprising it is that anything ever gets done. I mean, I just, there was this scantron, and there's these bubbles, and there's, you know, there's a list of names, and I was like, well, I'm shocked I've ever been nominated when I look at it in this way. Um, I don't know. It just, it, it gets, it feels very, it feels very hard to achieve it, it, through the aspects of the particulars, I guess. And what was your yeah. number one choice on your ballot for comedy series? <laughs> My yeah, <laughs> last year. Any year. Well, it was our show. <laughs> of, course. of course. Yes. Well, gosh. So if you, you know you've got a few number one votes, no matter what. Well, there was yeah. one vote there. You're right. There was one vote. <laughs> at least, if you were going to say Nurse Jackie or something, I was going to be terribly disappointed. But like, at least you could vote for your own show. Um, it might push no, you over some, the line. Have some family pride. Yeah, exactly. Now, um, Jim, also, you, you're obviously not shooting the show now. You're on break, but you've made your debut right. on Broadway in The Normal Heart. Tell us about that. Um, it has been um, a really incredibly fulfilling way to spend the summer. You know, the show going as well as it's gone and um, being received as well as it's had and, and, and really turning into such an event. You know, we're, we're lucky to, to, to play to full or nearly full houses every night and there's no preparing for that, you know. Um, so I think I would have been satisfied doing some free readings around town, but at the same time, I'm, I'm not looking this gift horse in the mouth. It's just, it's just excelled what I wanted to do this summer by so many degrees, and, uh, and I'm very grateful for it. And all kind of Tony Awards for the show this week. Yeah, that was really exciting. You know, I mean, I've done a lot of theater. Theater is what I've still done the most of, all told, you know, from beginning to now of uh, my career. And, um, and so uh, it was really, it was really a, a, a bit of a profound experience to sit in those Tonys. There. And not that the Emmys aren't and the Golden Globe, it's just, it's different, you know, and to be surrounded by all these people that I've read about or seen my entire life through theater work, um, uh, it was, it was, I just had a really, um, a really good time. Well, very quickly, uh, uh, yes. Kanal, we asked Kanal if he had a question for you, maybe something interesting or funny or whatever, and he just oh, said Lord. to ask you what time these days you're going to bed. He oh, said you would know what that that's means. That's a good one. Well, first off, we should preface it with in L.A., I'm in bed by 9. Wow. That's, that's, that's hard time for me. Um, and here, as the show doesn't start till 8 most nights, and uh, and luckily, because it's gone so well, we've had a lot of people come to see it, and there's a lot of dinners afterwards. I'm going to bed anywhere from 1 to 2 a.m., um, and, and it does make me feel like I'm on a bit of a summer vacation, I have to admit. Um, I'm loving time here. I'm also looking forward to going back to bed again at 9. <laughs> well, listen, we really appreciate your time today. I know how busy you are with the, with the, yeah, with the uh, show schedule, and, and we just uh, wish you all the best again with, with uh, another Emmy nomination and maybe another Thank win this you. summer. Thank you. I appreciate that. Rob, get better. Thanks.